Hi everyone, welcome to our next lesson here, uh, the rise of dictators. So here are our objectives and standards again to uh, an understand the ideas of fascism and recognize how dictators came to power in Europe and around the world. All right, take a look at the standards too, please. Okay, vocabulary preview. Fascism is a political movement that emphasizes loyalty to the state and its loyal leader, excuse me, with nationalistic views. And Nazism is Germany's form of fascism. And then Liberzum, I believe I'm saying that right, so uh, with my German, is uh, living space. Our desired result, how are dictators, dictators excuse me, able to gain control? All right, so people around the world trusted their governments to help them recover from the economic crisis. However, some people looked elsewhere for leaders who promised to punish those uh, responsible for the trouble as well as make their country strong. So this eventually is going to lead or led to the rise of dictators. So fascism requires obedience to a leader and loyalty to the state or your country. It also emphasizes nationalism. Remember, nationalism is, you know, thinking your country's greatest, wanting to build your country up, make your country strong. So it also focuses on that as well. Now, fascists typically uh, also wear a uniform or a certain color to represent themselves, and they are known for holding massive rallies or, you know, like uh, events and things like that. And typically in fascism, there is only one leader who has complete control. All right, let's talk about Italy. So many Italians were angry at the results of the Paris Peace Conference, which occurred in 1919. Uh, Italy was bitter over the failure to gain large amounts of territory as a result of that peace conference. And inflation, which we talked about already, uh, which is like rising prices uh, on unemployment, uh, was causing frustration as well in the country. So with these things going on, some wanted a new leader or government to solve the problems. So a newspaper editor and politician named Benito Mussolini promised to be that leader. Uh, he said he would regrow the economy and rebuild the military. And in 1919, Mussolini established the fascist party. Uh, his popularity continued to rise as conditions in the country continued to decline. So October 1922. 30,000 fascists led a march on the capital city of Italy, which is Rome. Black shirts, now these were supporters of Mussolini, known because they wore black shirts. Uh, like I just said, they're supporters of Mussolini, and they demanded that King Victor Emmanuel III, who was in charge of Italy, put Mussolini in charge of the government. Uh, Victor Emmanuel agrees to this because, you know, there's some violence and protests going on, so they kind of calm the country down, he agrees to do this, and Mussolini becomes the leader of Italy. Now Mussolini soon became known as Il Duce, uh, which is just another way of them calling him the leader. Uh, he banned all political parties, except the fascists, of course, and stopped democracy. His opponents were sent to prisons, um, censorship controlled the radio and other outlets, so again, not allowed to speak out against Mussolini or the fascists. And Mussolini also tried to control the economy and banned um, strikes, so banned labor unions from going on strike. So again, this is how we see the rise of a dictatorship in Italy uh, during this time. All right, let's talk about Germany. At the end of the First World War, Adolf Hitler, which I'm sure many of you have seen or heard his name before, uh, was in Munich, which is in Germany. He decided to join a small political group in 1919. The group opposed uh, communism and the Treaty of Versailles, and they later renamed themselves uh, the Nationalist Socialist Workers' Party, or Nazis for short. Now, Hitler quickly became a leader within the party due to his organizational skills and his uh, speaking capabilities. Um, and eventually he is chosen to be the Fuhrer, or again, the, the leader of the Nazi party. So he becomes in control of his political party. In March 1923, seeing how successful Mussolini was, remember this is less than a year later, if Mussolini did this in October 1922, Hitler goes, hey, why can't we take over the government? So in March 1923, Hitler and his supporters planned to overtake the government. The plan failed uh, and Hitler is going to be arrested. 
Now he's sentenced to, I forget the jail term right now, but he's not sentenced to very much, much time in jail and he doesn't serve that long anyway. Uh, but while in jail, uh, Hitler wrote Mein Kampf, or uh, My Struggle. In it, he described his political views and his goals for Germany. Uh, one of the big things that he focuses on, or a couple of the big things he focuses on, is he wrote that non-Aryans, those who were not of German descent, such as those of uh, the Jewish backgrounds and other like that, communists, gypsies, things like, uh, things like that, those who were mentally or physically disabled, um, that all those people are pretty much inferior. Okay, He doesn't see them as worthy uh, of being pretty much on earth. He also uh, rejected the Treaty of Versailles, obviously, which we know many Germans were upset with the Treaty of Versailles and how they were treated in it. And he promised to give Germany uh, Liebersam, like we said, uh, living space. Okay, so he promised to kind of help Germany spread its territorial borders again. So after leaving prison in 1924, Hitler revived the Nazi party. Now, many people aren't really listening to Hitler again. The Nazi party is kind of still kind of a, it's a growing party, but still not a big, big political party in the 1920s. Okay, so many people are kind of, you know, brush him off and brush the Nazis off, don't really listen to them very much. That's until the 1930s when, as we talked about yesterday, uh, the Great Depression hits and it quickly spreads around the world. So as people begin to suffer more and more, uh, they begin to pay more attention to the Nazis. So by 1932, the Nazis are going to become the largest political party in Germany. Now to kind of keep Hitler under control and to kind of you know, keep the Nazi party in check, so to speak, uh, Germany's president, Paul von Hindenburg, names Hitler Chancellor. So as Chancellor, Chancellor is basically a, the German version of a Prime Minister, um, but as Chancellor, uh, Hitler called for new elections for Parliament, the German Parliament. Uh, one of the things that Hitler was able to do to boost support for uh, the Nazi Party and to gain more members in Parliament uh, there was a fire at the Reichstag uh, a few days before the election. This was the building where the German parliament met. So Hitler, you know, and historians are still looking at this today, um, you know, whether or not it was communist, whether or not it was done by the Nazis. Um, so there's still some debate over that. I believe that most historians agree that it was mostly done by um, the Nazis themselves to gain support. Um, so either way, Hitler uses this fire at the Reichstag to build support. He blamed the communists for the attack and fear quickly spreads across Germany that, oh my gosh, the communists are going to take over our country. What are we going to do? We need the Nazis in there to uh, you know, protect us and you know, help build our country. Um, so with that said, the Nazis were able to gain a small majority of power in government. So now that Hitler is chancellor and he has kind of, you know, power in parliament of the Nazi party, uh, he's able to turn the country into a totalitarian state. Uh, he began to ban other political parties and arrested any opponents. Uh, he also created the Schutzstaffel, if I'm saying that correctly again, but more commonly known as the SS, which were a group of black uniformed protection guards, which were mainly used for murder and violence. Um, in 1934, the SS arrested and murdered many of those who opposed Hitler. So many people also became shocked and terrified by the tactics of the secret police, also known as the Gestapo. And there's a picture of Adolf Hitler there. Again, I'm sure you may have seen pictures of him before, uh, but that is him there. Hitler took control of the economy in Germany as well. Uh, labor unions were dissolved and strikes were banned. And Hitler used all types of propaganda to help grow his power and his support system. Uh, he used the radio, he used art, he used um, movies. Um, there were these massive events called book burning events where people would get together in their kind of town square or their, you know, town in their towns and burn books that weren't necessarily in agreement with with what Hitler believed or what the Nazis believed. Um, so they did burn a lot of books. Um, churches were not allowed to make statements against Hitler. Um, and children were kind of forced to join what were known as Hitler youth groups. Um, and, you know, kind of training these children to become, you know, the next leaders of the, the, the uh, Nazi party, kind of like what Stalin did 
by having children join these youth groups too and indoctrinating with them to, with the beliefs and views of um, these political parties and organizations. And they also learned in schools the beliefs and views of the Nazis, even colleges and universities were, you know, were, you know, uh, told to, you know, not go against the views of the Nazi party. So again, taking complete control, very similar to what Stalin did, and very close to what Mussolini did. <clears throat> Another big platform of the Nazis uh, was attacking the Jewish. The Nazi party used those who were Jewish as the cause of the problems for Germany. And this soon led to the spread of anti-Semitism across Germany. In 1933, the Nazis passed laws removing uh, pretty much basic rights of the Jewish people. And on the night of November 9th, 1938, those who were Jewish had their homes, their businesses, their synagogue, which many of you may know are religious places for uh, those who are Jewish, and even themselves uh, attacked. And I believe a couple of people were actually murdered as well. Um, this becomes known as Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass. So around the world, dictators began to come to power. Uh, you know, we'll see this in Japan as well. We'll see it in other countries. Um, but either I don't want you thinking that um, you know this was just spreading around the world because there are still countries that are going to stand firm in democracy like the United States, like France, like Great Britain, and we're going to see that you know once again unfortunately the world is going to come into conflict because these these countries which are having dictatorships and then these countries which have democracies are going to eventually come to you know a breaking point and have to go to war again and we'll go to World War II. Okay, again, our closure. Uh, how were dictators able to gain control? Think about how Hitler and Mussolini um, were able to gain control in their countries. What types of things did they do? What type of things did they say uh, to pull people to their uh, side to support them? And that will help you uh, with your questions today. All right. Have a great rest of your day or night. Talk to you soon.